Hi everyone, I have given you some feedback in the Dropbox so that you can see some of my comments on your first short writing assignment. I won't do this for every assignment, um, but for the first one I kind of just want to do some extra special feedback to help you, you know, maybe brush up on some things in the past that you haven't done in a while and you might just need a little gentle reminder and also clear up anything I saw about the Beowulf text that the class as a whole or a few people in the class might have been struggling with. So this is just a general little quick check-in and brush up on some things that I was seeing in the um, major assignment one component one. So really quick I think overall everyone <laughs> had a little bit of MLA stuff that just needed a little bit of tweaking. Not anything major. There wasn't anyone's assignment that I looked at and went, oh no, we are in big trouble here. Uh, just a few tiny little things that need to be cleaned up so you don't lose points unnecessarily on something minor. Uh, so uh, I will, underneath the video, I'll have a link to this Google Docs so you can click on these links. Um, I've just put in some links to some different things on the internet that will help you brush up on these things if you need a little extra help with them. You know, for instance, make sure you're using MLA format to format your paper. That should be 12 point times New Roman font. You should have your identification stuff on the first page, your name, my name, the course, the date. You should have your header with your last name and the page number on each page. You know, you should have uh, an indent. You should have a work cited it within the same document. Just those little things. Uh, so if you take a look at that uh, Purdue uh, Web Owl link, it should run you through those really quick. Another thing is is that make sure in the body of your paper you're for properly formatting your titles especially for this one Beowulf is the title of the poem but it's also the title of the main character and so if you don't properly format the title and in this case epic poems are italicized then it could get really confusing whether you're talking about the poem as a whole or the character of Beowulf so make sure that you're doing that make sure that when you are doing your in-text citations like here's an example of an in-text citation here Beowulf and then lines th th 373 to 79. Make sure that you have uh, are, are following MLA. I know some of you guys are science based majors and so you might have more comfort with APA or um, CSE and so when it comes to doing your citations you might get them a little mixed up. In MLA we don't use commas and that sort of thing so if you just need a little brush up on in-text in citation, that link will help you out. And to follow up more about the in-text citation, for an epic poem, you should use the signal word from the work cited and then the line numbers. I just noticed that it kind of cut this off here. It doesn't if you go directly to it. Sorry about that. At any rate, uh, you can use the author's last name or since this poem is anonymous, you can use anonymous if, if you like. Either one's correct, but you should have the line numbers at the end. And so it would look like this, Beowulf and then the line numbers that you're referencing, or anonymous and the line numbers that you're referencing, instead of the page number, which you might be used to if you're citing a novel or a story or something. And then finally, make sure that you're using a hanging indent for the citation on your works cited page or the citations on your works cited page. It should look like the author's last name or the signal word is kind of hanging off a little cliff basically. So just make sure you're doing that. Like I said, no huge, uh, no one person did all of these things wrong. Most of you did everything right and then like just forgot to do a hanging indent or you did everything right and you had a page number instead of a line number. But just some things to kind of refresh you on there. And so just a little brush up on some grammatical stuff. Uh, uh, avoid dropped quotes whenever you're inserting a direct quote. 
make sure that you give some kind of setup. You don't just drop the quote in like a little bomb. You have to give some sort of setup. That could be as simple as in the poem, comma, Beowulf says, comma, and then the line, or um, according to the author, this happened, and then the quote. So just make sure you're kind of setting up those quotes. Because this is an epic poem, there will probably be some times in your writing, especially in the essay, where you're going to want to do a long quote. Some of you did do longer quotes. Just a good rule of thumb is for each sentence that you quote, make sure you spend two or three sentences explaining the relevance to your point before transitioning to your next idea. So make sure you're fully explaining why you're using a quote. If it is important enough to put in there, make sure you set up the importance give the quote, and then explain again why you're using that quote, okay? Tense switching. When we write about literature, the idea is when we're writing about it, it's alive, so make sure that you're using present tense and be conscious of not switching between tenses. Stay consistent. Uh, you can read more about uh, tense shifting at that link if that's something that I kind of noted you might need a little uh, help with. And then finally, if if you're struggling with developing more specifics and stronger, more specific and stronger paragraphs, you might look at rephrasing any awkward sentence structure that you have. That can usually kind of help um, fix those things. So, not to make this video too long, but there were two questions that I got that I thought were kind of. Um, I'm going to do it this way, <laughs> even though this is like the editing mode, so because it's cutting it off and it's driving me crazy, and it's probably driving you crazy too. But two questions that I got that I thought I could should clear up about the plot. I know that the language is a little difficult, and so maybe you missed some of these things in the plot. One question is, why does Beowulf want to fight for Rothgar and his people? Like, why? Like, everyone who's done this, attempted to do this, has had certain deaths. So, like, why has he wanted to do this? Well, if you look back at lines 460 to 480 in the poem, you'll see that Beowulf is fighting for Herat because Rothgar and Beowulf's father, when they were younger, they were in battle together, and Beowulf killed a man. And remember, the man price, or the wear guild, is uh, a part, that's the middle, that's the middle, uh, the old English word for it, is what must be paid for the life of another person. And so when Beowulf's father killed this person, Rothgar paid the man price for Beowulf's father, essentially saving father's, Beowulf's father from the death penalty. And so Beowulf has come to like repay the debt of his father. So it's that very noble repayment of the debt of his father to the Rothgar's people and the kingdom at Herod. So that's why he's there. And then another question I got, and I thought this was a really good question, is why is the dragon so motivated to protect the hoard of treasure? And I thought that this writer was really picking up on the Scop's ancient storytelling technique. You know, a dragon, even in this time, was considered an old mythical creature, and um, it was considered like something that represented those people in times of long ago, even for them, they had long ago. And so the Scop would have been using the dragon and the horde of the kings of long ago to um, get his audience to compare and contrast the old times with the new. So when you think about it, the fact that Beowulf is aging and this battle with the dragon is his final battle and, um, the, and he dies and it's really his battle with the ancient world and he's old and the dragon's old and the horde's old and so it's kind of this death of this old world and, and an uncertain future right when Beowulf dies so it's really you know just a nice you know allegoric ending of uh, Beowulf and the dragon. So those are just a few things that you might want to consider when you are taking a look at your MA1 and as we move forward in developing uh, more concerning our research essay on Beowulf, just some things to kind of keep in mind in terms of MLA, grammar, and Beowulf. 
Let me know, you guys, if you have any questions, and I hope that you found this helpful.